Everybody loves coloured LEDs, so let's put 256 together to make a fully programmable light box. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Now, everybody loves flashing coloured lights and NeoPixels are a great way of adding full colour, fully controlled RGB LEDs to your microcontroller project. So, what could be better than putting 256 of these together to make a computer controlled light box? So, in this video, I'll show you my latest Raspberry Pi Pico project where we build a 16x16 16 16 RGB LED matrix light box and program it in MicroPython so that we can create a whole range of displays and animations to brighten up our lives. Now, if you fancy building one of these for yourself, uh, and this is it sitting here behind me, then um, all of the design, code and 3D printing files, I'll put those all online for you to download and I'll be covering the building and programming of the project in some upcoming tutorials. So please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of these videos as I release them. And, and don't worry if you're not an electronics expert. If you simply want to make this project, I'll provide all the software for a range of display settings that will get you up and running very easily. But for now, let's just take a look at how this project is put together and what it can do. So this project basically consists of a small microprocessor circuit and an RGB matrix built onto a base plate. So the actual circuit then for this project is, is really st very straightforward. We've got a Raspberry Pi Pico connected to a number of buttons and then a single output connected to a strip of 256 of these NeoPixels. Now to add an extra bit of pizzazz to the project, I've also added a microphone so that our Pico can monitor sound. Now at the moment, I've just built all of this up using a prototype board, but I will eventually move this on to a printed circuit board. And again, I'll show you exactly how to do that in some of the subsequent videos. Now the framework for the light box is a mixture of 3D printed parts, cut MDF sheets and perspex sheets. So I've used an MDF base plate to hold everything together and then 3D printed a frame to enclose the 16x16 16 16 LED matrix holding a semi-transparent perspex sheet about 15mm above the LEDs. I've then 3D printed a divider matrix and that isolates each of the NeoPixels so that we get each LED creating its own square pixel rather than having its light spread out and merging along with its neighbours. And again, all of the files and construction of this framework will be covered in later videos. Now at the back of the matrix, I've used a mirrored perspex sheet, and that's just to make sure that we push as much of this coloured light forwards, um, and then used some self-adhesive NeoPixel strips, and I've cut those to length and then stuck them down onto this mirrored sheet. Now wiring the matrix is really quite simple again. So the, the single data line from the microcontroller enters the matrix in the bottom left corner and then it simply snakes its way up and down the rows needing only a single connection at the end of each line of pixels. Power then is connected down the left hand side and I've split this into four sections to reduce the total current drive in each of the wires. And that's basically it. Apart from, of course, I've bought this 5 volt power supply to supply everything with some electricity. Now, in its basic form, this is simply a light box with coloured lights. So, of course, you can use it to provide simple illumination. And I've programmed this one here so that the buttons allow you to adjust both the brightness and then the colour of the RGB matrix. Now, as we've got a small computer attached to it, we can then start to program it to automatically choose a colour, fade in, fade out, and then simply repeat this process, choosing a different colour each time. Now, as you've seen, I've added these control buttons to allow us to easily move between these different displays. So if I press the centre button, that just moves between displays. And then within each of these displays, I can control various aspects of it by using these other menu buttons. 
So both of these functions so far then have treated the LED matrix as a single colored light source. And that's very similar to many of the light boxes that you'll find in the shops. But the whole advantage of our design is that we have full control over each of these 256 pixels. Now the best way to think of the LED matrix is as a 16 by 16 pixel computer display. And anything that you could do on a computer monitor, you can then do on this light box. So we can run some simple animations. And this here is just a simple bouncing box demonstration. So our microcontroller is simply generating each frame and then writing it out to our display. But the Raspberry Pi Pico is actually quite a powerful microcontroller and it can handle much more complex animations. So on this demo, um, it's running uh, John Conway's Game of Life simulation, and that, and that simulates a colony of organisms that live and die depending on the number of neighbouring live cells. So this um, requires our microprocessor to scan the grid. It then applies a range of mathematical rules to each of the pixels, and then generates the next frame of the animation. Now, for the more technically minded, each of these animations, and indeed all of these displays, are coded as separate modules within the software. So all of the menu operation and interface with the LED matrix and the microcontroller are all handled by my own uh, sort of mini operating system. Then each display module that we produce simply needs to write its information to a frame buffer provided by the operating system one frame at a time when it's instructed to do so. So coding your own animations is just simply a matter of writing an extra module and then registering that into the actual system. Now, the added feature that you might remember is that I added a microphone as part of the circuit. Now, the idea here is to allow the microcontroller to sample sound. And again, all of the code for this is built into the operating system, which I will cover the full um, design and coding of that in another video. But the upshot then is that you have a frequency plot available for you to use in your animations. So you can see um, in this simple spectrum analyzer de demo, um, as I play different frequencies into the microphone, you get different peaks on the display. And then again, if I play some music, um, we'll see the frequency spectrum for that on the LED matrix. And that basically, basically gives us um, the sorts of display that you might see on a graphic equalizer. But again, as we've got a full microprocessor behind the scenes, we can start to do much more complex animations based on this data. So on this display, I'm using coloured squares to represent each of the frequency bands, and then using the brightness of each square to represent the intensity of that sound. And, and the upshot of this is that you get this some sort of a, it's a psychedelic tunnel effect that, that pulses in time to the music. And I must admit, I, I actually do find this um, very easy to get quite mesmerised by this one. So hopefully you can see that this lightbox project then is designed to be expandable. You can add your own displays and you're only going to be limited by your own imagination. And of course the, the, the 16 by 16 pixels. But I'm also going to be expanding the capabilities of this project in the coming videos. And one of the first expansions then will be to add Wi-Fi control using the browser on your phone. And again, we, we, we did some tutorials earlier on on how to create um, in effect, web-based interfaces for your projects. Uh, and then going on from there, I'll hopefully integrate the whole project into Alexa, so we can hopefully have a look at how that works and how we can then voice control this um, light box. So that's it for this overview video. Um, if you do fancy having a go at this project, then, then do make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be releasing build and coding videos over the coming weeks, which will show you exactly how to make your own light box, and then how to go on and program your own displays. So, so the, the next video in the series then, that will cover the basic construction, um, so that you can get your own light box up and running as quickly as possible. And, and this will include all the information you need to put everything together and get it working without actually going into the coding. So, so do make sure that you then look out for these following videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Do please have a go at building your own. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the following videos. And bye for now.
For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.